So yesterday was the SBR March 23 exam. Do you want to know what came up? Do you want to know what I thought of the exam? Listen on. I just want to stress that I haven't actually seen the examination, but what I have been doing today is actively listening. All right. So I want to give you my impression. I want to give you my understanding of the sort of things that were appearing in the exams. And there's more than one exam that's knocking around. So if you did the exam, you'll recognize some things, but maybe not others. Question one is on groups. And what a beautiful core thing to be asked to do to calculate and explain goodwill. Maybe it didn't have a non-controlling interest. Maybe uh, there were some tricks involved around it, but central to what we're about. Is it an associate? Is it a subsidiary? If you've got options to purchase additional shares, are they likely? Are there non-voting shares knocking around? Judgment has to be used. Do you have power or do you only have significant influence? Discuss, draw the right conclusion based on the evidence that you've got there. Justify your answer. And although goodwill is subject to an annual impairment review, and although goodwill uh, the impairment loss on goodwill cannot be reversed. Sometimes there are other assets that need to be impaired, things like intangibles. And it's possible in certain circumstances to reverse impairment losses on those types of things if, but only if, the uh, original circumstances that caused the impairment loss have themselves reversed out. Now, Group accounts is always there at question one, and there's a major change occurring in the way that question one is going to be tested from September 23 onwards. I'll be talking about that towards the end of the video. Question two is always about ethics. Question two is always about ethics. And traditionally, you know, mistakes were being made. Um, around an accounting treatment. I think there was something around non-current liabilities, current liabilities. How do you draw that distinction? But if you have a mistake, arguably it has to be corrected and it's a mistake because there's a lack of competence or it's deliberate so there's a lack of integrity. But to be honest, that ethical dilemma is slightly old hat these days. How does information technology affect the ethical duty of the accountant? Massively is the answer. You know, we lock the car, we lock the company premises, we need to lock the company data. Now that means passwords, that means proper procedures around the sensitivity of data. If we're receiving, if we're, if we're, not, we're not getting cash sales these days, we're getting sales over the internet. So we've got to preserve the integrity of the data of our customers' credit cards. Yeah, it would be catastrophic if our website was hacked and our selling tools and our customer data was compromised. We have an ethical duty to protect their confidentiality. We have an ethical duty to be competent. If there's bullying going on, I don't want to know. Well, I do want to know. It's not professional behaviour. If we've got nepotism, if we've got senior people and junior people who are related to each other and favouring each other, it's, it's, it's a minefield and we need to be conscious and aware of that. If we're offered a job for more money than we think it's worth, if we're offered a job with a previous client, we've got to think about our objectivity. We've got to think about our independence. We've got to think about our competence. Do we have experience in that sector? Yes, we can learn. Yes, we've got continuing professional development. But are you being overpaid? Are you being bribed? Are you being uh, expected to turn a blind eye when you discover some kind of uh, inappropriate behaviour? Because you're bound in by confidentiality. Unless there's whistleblowing, you've got a real 
potential ethical dilemma going on. But in all of these ethical questions, even if you are not specifically asked to do so, tell them what to do. You know, a doctor will diagnose the issue. A doctor will tell you what's wrong, use the right words. But you want to know the medicine that you're going to be prescribed. You want to know the operation you're going to have. You want some form of action so you can get better. So think in all of these scenarios to conclude with some form of recommendation. There are professional marks available, only a couple, but it's that sort of thing that will earn you the professional marks. Debt versus equity. Loads of things come up in, in SBR. Loads of things come up across the exam. Um, but financial instruments uh, was there in various forms. Um, something about fair value through P&L liabilities convertible loan notes, that kind of thing for some of you. Revenue. <laughs> Revenue. Yes, it's tested at FR, but I don't assume that everybody knows revenue. It needs to be retaught at SBR because where you've got variable consideration, you've got to make a judgment as to the amount you would expect to receive. And if it's 70 percent likely that you're going to receive a certain sum of money, that's what I would recognize as the revenue. If you've got a whole series of different outcomes, then potentially you can take an expected value basis. So revenue is a key standard at SBR. I would expect to see it there again in the future. Faithful representation depends on telling the truth. Substance over form. Useful information has to be faithfully represented. It's a fundamental characteristic. Telling the truth, substance, over the law, over the form, is an essential ingredient and part of faithful representation. That's why we, that's why we recognise a right of use asset under a lease, even though we don't legally own it. That is why we prepare the group accounts as if they were a single entity when they're not. So, you know, maybe only a few marks, but nice. I thought something like that was nice. Cash flow. I had a dream. I have a dream, said Martin Luther King. Well, I had a dream a couple of days before the exam that cash flow was going to be there. And it was for some, not for others, because you do different exams. But it came up in a seven marks, I think, in a narrative discursive, interpretive way rather than a number crunching way, which, you know, pleased some, but didn't please others. Some people came out of the exam and said they felt unlucky. that They didn't like what came up. They felt it was unlucky. Now, I think students make their own luck. The more mock exams you do, the luckier, the luckier you will be in the exam. If you cover the whole syllabus, the luckier you will be in the exam. That's my approach. I don't like segmental reporting, but sometimes you have to do things that you don't like because it's a compulsory exam. It came up this time. Now, does that mean it won't come up next time? Does that mean we can rule it out for June? I don't think so, because if you didn't do segmental reporting, a lot of people were doing question four on alternative performance measures. And alternative performance measures came up in December. And, 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 and it came up in March, twice on the trot. Oh, my God. It is predictable that the ACCA exams are unpredictable. Yeah. Think about that. And this question on alternative performance measures seemed to concentrate on EBITDA. Yeah, I, I wrote something about uh, EBITDA before uh, COVID. And, you know, you've got this ridiculous scenario where, you know, COVID happened. So you have to kind of roll with that. And I think any any adjustment uh, to, 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 to the earnings pretending that COVID didn't happen is is probably a lot of rubbish. Anyway, 
so much came up in the exam, you know, cash generating units, uh, all sorts, all sorts. You have to be comfortable with the full syllabus. So where are you at and where are you going? Some of you have just done the exam. Fantastic. Maybe you're thinking about doing audit. Maybe you're thinking about getting on to do Ben Wilson's course. And I would strongly, strongly recommend that. Some of you, though, may be thinking that you haven't, uh, you're thinking ahead and you're watching this video because you're thinking about doing the exam in the future. And I can help you pass the June, I can help you pass the September exam. My courses are already open. Now, there's a major change in the way that question one is going to be tested from September. From September, you will be given a pre populated spreadsheet. You will be given a set of accounts, a group accounts already prepared. And that spreadsheet will then need updating, will then need correcting. And I have already reflected that in my September course. That's important to me that I'm ahead of the game. I'm on track to make sure that you are focused on making sure that you can pass the exam. So if you are thinking of doing SBR, I provide flexible material. Yeah, pre-recorded videos. I provide notes and I provide support. That's the point. My explanations, I hope, are clear. My notes are clear. I mark your homework. I, I set and I mark your mock exams on the ACCA practice platform. Only their original questions. And I'm here to support you through WhatsApp, okay? And it's because I'm giving you so much support and so much marking and so much feedback that I'm confident that you're gonna pass, which is why I give you a pass assurance, okay? So if you wanna find out more, if you wanna sign up with me, please do so. This is my, you, you've got a mobile phone, I've got a mobile phone. You've got WhatsApp. I've got WhatsApp. Any queries, any questions, reach out to me. I can help you pass the SBR exam. Let's do it.